Gold almost got back above 20, 2,400 this week. Turned back. It got to like, I think, 2,395. It's not that far away now, 2,370-ish, something like that. But if you measure the price of the Dow in terms of gold, just take the Dow price and divide it by gold, it's fewer than 17 ounces. That's about where the Dow has been uh, for quite some time now. It's been around that range, maybe even a little bit higher. The all-time record high for the Dow in terms of gold was in 2000. That was at the beginning of the, the millennia. The Dow actually got above 40 ounces of gold. Because remember, at the time, gold was around 300. And it's now, you know, 2300. So gold has risen a lot more than the Dow over that period of time. But if you actually want to go all the way back to some prior peaks in the Dow, significant peaks in the Dow Jones, 1929, before the infamous stock market crash, that peak of the Dow was 20 ounces of gold, approximately, 1929. Now, when the market crashed, it got Dow got down 1932-ish to close to one-to-one, -one, not quite one-to-one -one with, with gold. The next time the Dow was worth 20 ounces of gold was 1966. Long time to get back up to that high. It didn't really make a new high. And then it crashed again. And by the early 1980s, we were actually lower than 1932. We got even closer to one to one. But in both circumstances, we were below two to one, but not quite one to one exactly. But we, we got close. And this next bear market might actually take us all the way down. We may actually get to one to one. We'll see. But I mean, if it gets anywhere near, if it gets less than two to one, that is a massive decline. So for the Dow to be two to one with gold, if it stays around 40,000, gold would have to be 20,000 for two to one. Now, the Dow may not stay at 40,000. Maybe it drops to 30,000. And then gold only has to be 15,000 an ounce, not 20,000 an ounce. But what if the Dow goes to 100,000? What if there's so much inflation that we have a 100,000 Dow? Does that mean everybody is rich? Well, no, not if gold is 50,000 an ounce because it means that you can only afford two ounces of gold with the Dow Jones. Right now, you can afford almost 17 ounces. Peter Schiff highlights how the US government's actions could send gold soaring to $50,000 an ounce. This week, gold nearly reached $2,400, emphasizing a stark contrast from 2000 when the Dow was over 40 ounces of gold. Today, it's around 17 ounces. Schiff explains that if inflation continues unchecked, Gold could reach $50,000 while the Dow hits $100,000, exposing the illusion of prosperity created by inflation. This scenario underscores how inflation erodes real wealth, making gold a crucial hedge. So this is something that you got to keep in perspective because inflation creates an illusion of prosperity, an illusion of wealth. That's another reason that government loves inflation so much. I mean, they're really uh, partners. The government derives all sorts of hidden benefits from inflation, but it never wants to admit this, right? It never wants to say this out loud, right? You know, but everything the government um, does is supported by inflation. In fact, you could say that inflation could be the, the God, the deity of the government. They kind of worship inflation, but they never speak its name. I mean, not in the context of what they're using it for, right? And so when the public gets upset that prices are rising a lot and their living standards are falling, uh, then the government will, will talk about inflation, but it'll talk about it as if it's this exogenous event that is completely beyond their control. It's just something that happened. Like oh, Bi Biden, claiming that it's corporate greed, right? And I explained this on the last podcast, as if corporations weren't greedy, they were just a bunch of altruists 
up until a couple of years ago when they finally discovered their inner Grinch and decided that they were being too nice and they were leaving all this money on the table. And so now it was time to put the screws on the consumer. And it just so happened to coincide with Biden being the president, right? And so he's got to deal with this corporate greed. These are the inflation chickens coming home to roost. This is how the government has been financing its budget deficits. This is how the government plays Santa Claus. This is how the voter gets something for nothing. Well, you don't get something for nothing. People are paying for all that something now with much higher prices. But apart from that, by driving up nominal numbers and then not properly measuring them, I mean, that's another um, objective of the CPI, why it's deliberately designed not to capture the full extent of inflation's impact on prices, is the government can pretend that things are getting better because people are earning more. People's homes are worth more. Their salaries have gone up, right? Or their, their, their net worth, their stock portfolios. Everybody has a bigger number, right? Not too long ago, it was hard to make $100,000 a year. That was a big salary when I was young. It's not a big salary anymore, but people think, wow, I'm making $100,000 a year. I must be doing great, right? Because it's a bigger number. And, and so the government can get people into this false sense of prosperity that they're earning so much money or their house is worth so much money. People feel rich because they, they own this expensive house, but they're not getting rich. Right? The value of the money is going down. Continuing the discussion, Peter Schiff discusses how the value of the dollar has dramatically declined. Reflecting on the past century's inflation, he highlights that from the 1800s to the early 1900s, gold cost dollar 20 an ounce. But today, it exceeds $2,400 due to Federal Reserve policies and government spending. Schiff explains that while nominal values of assets like the Dow Jones have increased, their real value in terms of gold has decreased. In 1929, the Dow was worth 20 ounces of gold, but today it's less than 17 ounces. This inflation masks true economic prosperity, creating an illusion of wealth. And so, sure, if the money is losing value, then the prices have to go up to reflect that. And that's what's going on with the Dow Jones. When the Dow dollar, or when gold, rather, was $20, which is where it was, from the birth of our nation, the, the signing of the Constitution, up until Roosevelt devalued in the 1930s, for over 150 years, the dollar, $20 is what you need to buy an ounce of gold. That's all you needed. Now, with the Federal Reserve and all the government spending, it doesn't take $20 to buy an ounce of gold. You need more than $2,400. That's how much value the dollar has lost. Well, it hasn't just lost value in terms of how many more dollars you need to buy an ounce of gold. You need a lot more dollars to buy the Dow Jones. You need a lot more dollars to buy anything. But does that mean the Dow Jones has gone up? It hasn't. It was worth 20 ounces of gold in 1929 and it's worth less than 17 ounces of gold today. So in real terms, the Dow is actually cheaper than it was in 1929. Now that was a, a peak, right? That was the top of a bubble. So the Dow was very expensive in 1929, right? So it's not really a, a great comparison to say that the Dow hasn't gained any value when I'm gonna pick uh, you know, such a uh, overpriced moment in time, but it does, uh, put things into perspective that if you buy in a bubble, if you buy when the Dow is expensive, it's not a good deal. I mean, in general, stocks are a good investment if, if you buy them at a good price and you can get a good return. But they're not a good long-term investment if you buy in at a peak. Of course, it's hard to know exactly when you're buying at a peak, when you're buying there. Of course, nobody thinks they're buying the top. Everybody assumes that's going to keep going, and that's why they buy. But in a mania, in a hysteria that we had at the end of the 1920s, which coincided with the Fed, you know, the Fed caused that bubble. Even Alan Greenspan blames the Fed 
before the stock market bubble in the 1920s, right? He was very good at blaming the Fed for bubbles before he became Fed chairman. He was very good at calling out other central bankers who made mistakes, kept interest rates too low, and inflated bubbles, right? But when he became Fed chairman, right, he just did all of the stuff that he had criticized prior Fed chairmen for doing before he was on the Fed. Uh, but, but in any event, the people that got suckered in to the market and paid 20 uh, ounces of gold for the Dow, those shares are worth less than that today. Now, of course, it's a different Dow. There's very few stocks. I forget how many of the Dow 30 in 1929 are still here. Maybe two or three of them. I actually forget. I, I, maybe I should have looked it up before the podcast, but I didn't even know I would be having this discussion because, you know, I kind of ad lib these things. So I really didn't know that I was going to talk about this. But so had I been prepared, I might have checked it out. But I know that most of the companies aren't even in business anymore. Right, so they have to substitute them with new companies. So again, it's not apples to apples; it's you know different fruit there in the basket. But the point is that the Dow is lower now than it was at that high point. Now, you know, if if you know you held the Dow Jones for you know, not it's not quite a hundred years; it'll be a hundred year anniversary of the 1929 crash in 2029. Right. So it's you know over 90 years, but not quite 100. But over those 90 years, you know, if you were a little kid and you were born uh, in 1929, and you know your parents, your grandparents gave you you know 100 shares of the Dow, whatever, and you still own them today, and you're still alive, you made money because you earned dividends. But the principal, assuming you didn't reinvest the dividends, let's say you use the dividends and you've been spending them for the last 90 years, and you just have the, the Dow, right, or whatever, however, you know, it's actually gone down. If you sold the Dow today, you would get fewer ounces of gold, a little bit less, than what you would have got had you sold those shares 90 years ago at that at that time, right? And, and show, that shows you. Now, you get a lot more dollars, of course, right? You get way more dollars. You get more than 20 times the number of dollars, but that's, meaningless because the dollar today is not the same as the dollar in 1929. It doesn't buy what it used to. It's not just that you need a hundred times more dollars to buy an ounce of gold. You need a hundred times more dollars to buy just about anything, right? Everything is more expensive because of the government debasement of our money. That's why we have inflation. It's not an accident and it's not a natural byproduct of capitalism. Capitalism does the reverse. I pointed this out, but the CPI from 1800 to 1900 lost 50% of its value. Prices fell for a hundred years. That's what capitalism does. Now, in the following hundred years, prices skyrocketed. That's what socialism does. That's what government does. That's what central banking does which got mixed into capitalism and diluted it and distorted it, and we're dealing with the consequences. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. Peter Schiff highlighted how inflation has reduced the dollar's value, showing that despite the Dow Jones rising in nominal terms, its real value in gold has dropped since 1929. He stressed that inflation creates an illusion of wealth, driven by government and Federal Reserve policies. If you found this video insightful, please like, share, and subscribe for more financial insights. Share your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you.